On the upper columbia in pursuit of sea run sockeye salmon even though i'm 550 miles from the ocean so these fish run all the way up the columbia and get trapped in this large cold water pool because the river that they need to run up to spawn called the okanagan is lethally warm during the summertime so they have to wait for the first fall rains before they can run and they get stuck here provides an uh, opportunity for inland fishermen like myself to harvest fresh sockeye salmon. It's a nice fish. And you can see we use these long flashers and dodgers. This guy wants to stay underneath the boat <laughs> and they're very acrobatic. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Gonna get him there. There we go. Got him. That's a big one. Nice, healthy sockeye. All right. Well, now he just fell off the hook, so glad I had him uh, in the net when that happened. Here you can see, very healthy looking sockeye salmon. Probably two and a half, three pounds. So these fish, because they swim so far up the Columbia, and then still have many more months until they're able to run up the Okanagan. Um, carry a lot of fat load with them. Now the water temperatures in the Okanagan, once they reach 70 degrees, these fish can no longer swim up the river without being stressed. But down here in the Columbia, it's a cool 64 degrees and it'll stay that way all summer long. Now we do immediately bleed the fish to give us the best possible freshness. So when we fillet these fish and put them on the grill, on a cedar plank, they will taste absolutely delicious. And they, out of all the salmon in the Columbia, and we have all the species available here, sockeye, coho, chinook, this is definitely my favorite, is sockeye. There we go. Very healthy looking sockeye salmon. You can see what we use is a combination of usually a dodger or a flash or something that creates an attractant, and then a short, often 14 to 20 inch leader to some sort of pink or red lure, uh, often with blades or something that spins, and then a small, pink coon shrimp. So in Washington state we have to record our salmon catches on a catch card. They strictly monitor this fishery to ensure that there's not over harvest, which is why this weekend is the last weekend of sockeye season for the Upper Columbia. It was about an 18 day season this year and there's over 150-200 boats out here right now. Uh, everybody trying to get their last stab at sockeye. What's my depth on my fish finder, or what's the depth? 25 feet. Oh, there's fish. In the mid-90s, they almost lost this fishery. Uh, there was only about 1,600 sockeye that returned. Conservation efforts have restored this run to, and this year there's over 120,000, so it's quite a comeback story. Let me get this one in the boat. And my number two for my limit. Where are you at, buddy? There. There we go. Oh, he's in and out. This guy is the king of getting out of his net. There we go. Down in the net. Number two. Whew, they don't go quietly. So that's my second fish of the day. They do highly regulate this, so we're only allowed two fish 
a day for the season right now. So I'm gonna get this fish on ice and get this fish ready to go on the grill. Okay, so one of the first things you need to do when you get home with your salmon is you need to gut them and take the bloodline out, especially if you're gonna leave them overnight in the fridge like I often do because I'm tired after getting back off the water after a long day. So clean out that bloodline along the spine, take the gills out, it'll make for a better tasting meat. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and fillet these fish. We don't have to worry about descaling them because we're going to actually remove the skin uh, just prior to putting it on the cedar plank. So let's get started on getting these fillets off. I like to use a good medium length flexible blade knife for these sockeye salmon. Okay, so we're gonna make an incision behind the gill plate here and then sweep a little bit inward towards the front and then down along the spine and back. So I usually just kind of grip my finger up in here. We can save these collars and actually use these collars, which I will do. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to cut down, there's usually a little bit of tougher material there. And then rotate the blade until it goes up and underneath. And then just work right along the spine. And there you go. Some very nice bright red fillets there. And we just flip it over and do the same on the other side. So next I'll take the knife and I'll trim away these rib bones. Um, you can optionally take out the little pin bones that run along uh, here. You can see these little dots here. That's the pin bones. They stop right about there. You can feel them. You can use tweezers to pull them out, but I find that such a pain that I usually just work around them when I'm eating and uh, they're easy to pull out after the meat is cooked. And then you want to save these collars here because these are nice to grill. This meat in here is really fat. So you just take your knife and cut in along here and you can grill the collars as well. So I'll show you how I do that. So I just cut straight down along the spine there and then cut in along the collar. There you go. These little collars here actually taste very good too. And they look kind of neat when you put them on the grill. Okay, now that I've got my fillets here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a marinade and I'm gonna soak the fillets in this marinade for six to eight hours. Now, with the cedar plank approach to salmon cooking, I tend not to go very heavy on lots of flavor because I really want the flavor of the cedar smoke to come through. So the flavors I'm gonna use are gonna be those that complement that smoky, woody uh, flavor and smell and taste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a very common marinade, which is basically one part uh, mirin, which is Japanese cooking wine, one part soy sauce, and one part sake. Now you can use any sake you want, but I like to use the taru sakes. The taru sakes are sakes that are aged in cedar barrels. They have a very woody cedar aroma, which of course complements this recipe. Uh, so look for that taru label. There's several different uh, companies that manufacture taru sakes, but like I said, you can use any. Sake has got a very, as very acidic uh, and crisp and fruity, um, so it tends to complement salmon very well. So I'm just uh, cooking dinner for me and my wife tonight, so we'll just use one whole filet. So a half cup of both of these is completely sufficient uh, to meet our needs in terms of marinade. I'll just put it in a Ziploc bag and let it soak in there for six to eight hours. Okay, so I've got my marinade there. And then I can just put the filet hole down inside the marinade and put that back in the fridge and let it soak. I'm also gonna throw those collars in there as well and I'll throw those on the grill. All right, so I'm gonna take the sockeye, throw it in the fridge while it marinates. Like I said, six to eight hours for sockeye. If you're using really thick uh, salmon filets like king salmon, you might wanna look at doing overnight or maybe 12 hours at least, uh, just to make sure you get good penetration of that marinade. The next step is to prepare your cedar planks. And you wanna do this about two to three hours in advance of firing up your grill. Uh, now you can buy cedar planks specifically cut for cooking, but you don't wanna just go and buy any cedar plank at the hardware store because some of them have been treated with chemicals. This is non-treated cedar plank. They tend to be a little bit thinner. You're gonna soak these in water 
for about two to three hours before you put your fish on it. You can actually prepare these far in advance and then throw them in the freezer and hold them in the freezer uh, soaked and that's fine too. Okay, so I've already got my grill set at medium high and then I've skinned the salmon and just put a little bit of salt and pepper on there. Be sure and skin your salmon. You want that woody flavor to be able to penetrate up into the salmon. So let's go ahead and get this on the grill. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and check how things are going. We're about six minutes in. Uh, with sockeye, because it's a thinner uh, salmon, we need to check it more frequently than like say with king salmon, which might just take up to 20 minutes. You can see we're getting a little bit of the white along the board, but otherwise looks really good. We'll check the internal temperature here on the thickest part of the filet. So we're about 120, so we probably just need another six minutes or so and this will be done. So we'll go and close that back up. Okay, let's go ahead and check it. We're getting the strong aromatics from that cedar for sure. It looks very, very good. Let's go ahead and check the internal temperature. And we're at 135, there we go, so we're there. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the heat. Okay, so here's our collar, which I can just grab by the fin and move over to the plate. And then for the fillets, you can just use a spatula and slide up underneath there and uh, move them over to the plate. And I've got my veggies, a Sunomono salad, and some fresh berries. If you have any questions about cedar plank salmon cooking, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. See you next time out on the water and in front of the grill. Bye guys.